Hello, welcome to the Digital Marketing Fundamentals Workshop at the Virtual Napa Trailer Show, Dealer Education. It's a pleasure to be here today. My name is Kent Lewis, and I'm president and founder of Anvil Media. You can follow me on Twitter at Kent J. Lewis and my digital marketing agency at Anvil Media. So let's, uh, let's get into this briefly. We have a lot to cover today. Today, I'm going to start with a fundamental background and framework for digital marketing for those of you in the trailer dealer space that are relatively new to the digital dark arts. And then I'm going to talk through the fundamentals of keyword research, which is primarily used for SEO, but also for paid search. And I will also touch on paid social media, then talk about organic social, local search, and mobile, uh, as well as provide some resources. And then we'll wrap things up. A little bit about me. I have been optimizing websites since 1996, and I've run my own agency, Anvil, since 2000. I've been a part of eight agent, nine agencies actually in that time as well. And around that same time in 2000, I became an adjunct professor at Portland State University, where I currently teach a search engine marketing workshop once a year as part of a continuing ed certificate. And I, in 1999, but really it took off in 2001, I started PDX Mindshare. It's not a coincidence that the colors, orange and black, are the same as our logo for Anvil. Uh, they're sister organizations. It is a career community for those looking to network and grow their, their uh, career in their business and their roles at companies in the greater Portland market and Oregon. But there are international members of our LinkedIn group, which is the largest LinkedIn group in Oregon. That's pdxmindshare.com. And I've been a presenter at NATTA for like the last five or six years on and off and have enjoyed getting to know the dealer world. Uh, I also write regularly for publications like Smart Brief and the Portland Business Journal. I teach a quarterly so social media marketing workshop for SCORE in the Portland market, although anybody from any market can listen to the two-hour workshop, which is uh, typically around um, two hours. It's a good value. And then if you're looking to learn more about the digital dark arts, including social and search marketing, check out smpdx.org. It's a great organization. I was lucky enough to co-found in, in 06, and we piggybacked an event I had created in 05 with some friends called SearchFest uh, under the moniker of SEMPDX. And that event, annual event, is now virtual as, and is called Engage. So check out all these different websites and, for more information. But as I am going to warn you now, I tend to talk in jargon because I've been in this industry for too long. And so we have a glossary of terms on our website, anvilmedia.com. Go to the insights section, scroll down and check out the glossary. They're broken down by, uh, by topic. We also have great resources, a blog, articles, white papers, web archived webinars, cheat sheets, and eBooks in our, uh, in our uh, resource section as well we call insights. It's all free. So let's get into some of the framework for uh, digital marketing as you look to migrate uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, COVID has definitely pushed the issue and forced that digital transformation in your mark and marketing and as well as in business. So let's start with what you control, owned media. That is content you create based on your employees, your customers, your partners. That's typically um, articles, blog posts, webinars, videos, etc., photography. And what you typically do with that is put it on your website, uh, which you also own and, and manage, and put that out through shared platforms like social media. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, etc. You don't own those platforms, but you own your profiles and the content on that on those profiles. So it's a great way to get out and extend your awareness. On the earned media side, that is public relations. That's where I started my career. And that's the idea of getting industry publications, both local and trade and business publications to talk about you and your dealership, or if you provide accessories or your manufacturer, there are industry publications for all those. Organizations like NAPDA featuring you in their publication and on their website and in their conference and show uh, program, et cetera. And then there's paid media, buying your way in through advertising. So that in and that includes search, pay per click, social media ads, print, outdoor, et cetera. In the digital side, that's primarily paid search and paid social. 
but that could include industry publications, websites, et cetera. And the other components to think about when you're building a digital experience, there's the content you create that you then optimize for SEO or search engine optimization on your website, which we'll talk about, as well as paid search, which is Google Ads now and uh, Microsoft Bing. Uh, they continue to change their name uh, regularly just to keep us employed. Uh, there's the social content you create that may or may not live on your website as a blog or other content, but it certainly lives out on social. You can also utilize your content for email marketing and build email lists and message out to your customers that way. Put most of these channels into some sort of multi-channel or omni-channel program that's highly integrated, programs that are campaigns that are always on, that are brand related, as well as others that might be, um, you know, stop and start seasonal, et cetera. And it all starts with generating awareness that turns into interest. Then when people make a decision, then they purchase or create an action of some sort. So the AIDA sales funnel is a eight roughly developed in 1896, might be considered somewhat outdated. So let's give you a refresh on some of the newer techniques. Uh, the flywheel is championed by a um, CRM platform called HubSpot, which you may be familiar with. And they have roughly three ways to look at the sales process. They put CRM or customer relationship management platforms in the middle. I don't, it's an enabler, but it's not the, really the center of the target. It's more of a tech part of a technology stack, which might include email and other platforms. But in, in the end, it starts with strangers not knowing who you are and you use marketing to attract them and turn them into prospects. Then you use marketing um, and sales and marketing tools um, like email to engage them or um, display and retargeting advertising, a good SEO content, social content, to turn prospects into customers through engagement. And your, say, your service team, your customer service folks, will delight those customers, turn them into promoters, so they will go talk to strangers, thus doing the marketing for you. So the marketing team is responsible for turning strangers into prospects. Sales team turns customers into promoters. Um, it, you know, I'm sorry, converts the leads into customers, and the customer service team turns prom prom customers into promoters, and promoters reach out to the strangers. So some of these I would shift a little and rotate them, but they all spin in different directions and work together to create a more lifetime view that's an evolutionary look instead of a funnel where they all come from stranger to customer and then you're done. No, you're just starting because you've got to turn your customers into evangelists. So the next concept is the customer journey. You go through it every day, whether you're buying a new car, a trailer, a pair of shoes, or a new set of batteries on Amazon. So the customer journey is different for every product and, and even brands have a different journey depending on the audience. In short, a lot of journeys start offline, especially pre-COVID. They might read an article, see an ad in the paper, radio, print, or, or outdoor. They might hear from a friend word of mouth, and then they go online to do research. They might see an ad uh, before or after conducting a search. They might sign up for an email or follow on social media. Certain things you have uh, direct control, some things you have, um, we call earn touch point that are out of your direct control. Then they might surface again in terms of you have their contact information, you might mail them, they might visit your, uh, your dealership, uh, they might take a talk to somebody in your industry that refers them like a manufacturer referring you to, to, referring to the dealers. Uh, maybe they visit your website and order or send a request if you don't have e-commerce and join a community to talk and become fans and fanatics following you or, or getting your regular emails or mailers and they're you know, loyal customers at that point. So the journeys change depending on uh, you know, the customer, the segment, the product. If you're a dealer, it's different if you're a manufacturer or provide accessories or service, but you get the gist. What's interesting though, in terms of which channels generate the highest value over the lifetime is search engine optimization, organic search, followed by paid search, or, uh, paid search which are our core strengths at Anvil, not coincidentally, as well as the other high value channels like email marketing. Um, paid social can generate a return. That's why we call it paid media. We're agnostic on the platform, whether it's Google, Facebook, Twitter, or Microsoft Bing, doesn't really matter. But I do wanna plant a seed before we get into the fundamentals of keyword research and SEO that 
the pandemic has fundamentally changed our behavior. I wrote an article on my LinkedIn profile on this topic based on my experience after a couple months of um, four or five months of being in quarantine, not technically in quarantine, but working remote and then hybrid working at our office and at home, is that I found that my, myself, my friends and family, as well as my clients and my peers have started immediately when, when March hit and COVID sort of broke everything worldwide and in the States, we immediately started focusing on the fundament fundamentals. So instead of doubling down on marketing and sales or pulling back on marketing and sales, I focused on what matters, which was my team, my employees, and my clients. Focused on employee safety and wellness. I focused on, in fact, from March through May, I gave three raises despite cutting my own salary to make sure that my, my employees were taken care of. Um, then I immediately looked at my clients and started engaging with them, having conversations. How can we help you? What can we do? And um, helped set up and evolve our services for high return activities like Amazon and email marketing, which are really key in the you know, ROI side of things, return on investment. So we focus on fundamentals as a business and with our service offering, uh, we change up how we worked. You know, obviously, uh, for a while, we were all working from home, and then we actually started going back in June, a little earlier than some, but we're not a retail business, so we had a lot of control over who comes into the office or not. And, you know, we had to upgrade our communications and our virtual experiences, moving from physical presentations like I typically do and look forward to Memphis or other cities for NATDA. I, uh, we've moved to Zoom and other platforms. Uh, a lot of our clients have, have upgraded their e-commerce or moved to uh, e-commerce, which we're helping with, and helping our clients, particularly in the retail facing like dealers, to look at low and no-touch product delivery and service delivery, as well as trying to maintain a flexibility, yet maintaining an attentive approach to, um, to our engagement with our clients. And that was in August that I wrote that. But back in um, March and early April, I wrote an article on how to communicate and have given presentations on this as well, and especially early on in the COVID crisis. So I'm gonna breeze through this because not all of this is relevant in October as it was in March and April. So being proactive and timely with news and information about your COVID policies around your employees and your customers, being compliant with uh, federal, state, and county guidelines with what's uh, realistically able, you're able to do, and as you're communicating, being authentic uh, about how you um, are messaging out any me um, communications around COVID or frankly, just running your business day to day, but also having a bit of empathy, especially if that's who you are, about your employees, their, their family, your customers or clients and their family, uh, and your manufacturers and other partners, talking, talking that through and communicating it. Figure out if you are of a service mindset, what are you doing to donate your time or resources or cash to help get this country back on track, keep your industry afloat, um, helping both yourself and your employees and your customers, but others as well. Um, you can share ideas or tips. You can entertain, not just educate. People need to be educated for sure, but they would like to be entertained and humor is okay right now. It's actually encouraged by consumers according to research. But facts may tell, stories actually sell. So tell, sell through your storytelling around customers and the products and how you've evolved and adapted during these times. Um, maybe you've invented new ways to deliver, invented new products to help with the experience with trailers, help solve some sort of problems, or really what you've done to help um, with the COVID and pandemic issues. Um, we always prepare for the worst, but we always hope for the best. So with that said, now let's transition into SEO, search engine optimization. So the idea here is that when I started optimizing websites in 96, there were 12 to 14 search engines we optimized for separately, none of which were Google. By 98, Google came around and suddenly something called PageRank was important. So the links coming into your site determined how well you would rank. And good news is with my PR background, I was getting coverage, cool site of the day, other press coverage from my clients' websites, so they were ranking very well through the early 2000s, um, giving myself and my clients a head start with SEO. And again, paid search was just being evolving in 98, 99. AdWords didn't really launch until 02, but today we have you know advertising and all kinds of options through the Google network. 
which went from zero market share to over 90% market share in those um, in the in the previous 10 years, but in the last really 20, 24 years. So how are people using search engines and what are their preferences? A lot of uh, your potential customers are looking for text-based information about trailers and features and pricing, but they do love them images, right? They love to see images of the product, different angles, different features, and then videos, of course, telling the story. Now, we've worked with a lot of auto dealers, even RV dealers and boat dealers uh, over the years at Anvil, and some of those products, particularly boats, are very complex, and videos are a great way to tell a story about uh, featured products, product benefits and attributes, um, same with cars, but even a trailer could benefit from a 30 second video walkthrough or walk around more accurately. And so be thinking about video and even audio, there might be a, uh, probably a, dirt, uh, a lack of, not dirt, but a lack of um, podcasting in the trailer space. So that would be an opportunity potentially for your brand if it's authentic and makes sense. And really a majority of searchers are really only like clicking on the first few results. And we'll talk more about that later. But I just want you to know, like, they're really looking for uh, anything in the top five above the fold in search results. So how do you get there? Uh, well, where do you go? First, for and foremost, 94% of the market is Google. And that includes um, just under 70% of text, at, text searches. 20% are image searches. Only 3% are YouTube searches. Uh, just under 2% Amazon and so forth. So Google owns 94%, but, but YouTube is more than all other platforms combined, and Google, Google Images is exponentially larger than all other search engines outside of Google. So Google is the place, and luckily, you have a lot of ways that you can get engaged. You can um, get um, 85 out of the 100 clicks are going to organic results, so you can be part of that 85% of the clicks, or you can be part of the 15 out of 100 clicks that go to ads, pay-per-click ads. Um, most clicks happen on the first link on the way down. And then really, I, from my experience, I see under 10% go to page two because you're more likely to conduct a different search, honestly. So that's really what's happening in the world of um, paid versus organic search. So you can always buy your way in and we'll talk about that, but let's talk about organic. How are you gonna get your site to rank for specific brands of manufacturers or, or, or trailer styles? Or, or price points uh, or features. So the, the first thing that Google looks at, according to experts, because Google doesn't give away their secret sauce, is the trust or authority of your domain. So are you, big techs has a ton of authority over other manufacturers because they're, the they're the big dog in the space. But even a burgeoning, whether it's PJs or others that are still in the top 10 or 20 dealer uh, manufacturers, even they can play, but as a, as a dealer, um, it's typically a regional slash local game. And so how do you play against the others? Your domain should have more quality links coming in with a variety of anchor text saying, you know, dealer name um, or dealer type, uh, or sorry, trailer type linking into your product pages. But bottom line, it's the, the, the trust your domain followed by the link popularity of any specific page of your site, like a product page or category page or blog post. The anchor text of what's the, how, what is describing that page coming in from those third party sites, as well as, of course, the keywords on that page or on your site. You have to have the keywords if you want to rank. There are some other tertiary deals like social signals, kind of traffic and click throughs that come from searches to your site and hosting data like how old is your domain, when does it expire. Those are all trust factors that go into your, um, your domain authority and then ranking factors. Local is a little different. So local search is all of the above plus more. So it's your Google My Business listing, how credible that is, especially for ranking in Google. So name, address, phone number, reviews, ratings, etc. Citations are mentions of your location or your business. Um, On-page factors. So on your website, do you mention your name, address, phone number, and contact information, map, etc.? Um, do you have links that come in and mention the, the proc that are local links that really validate that you're a local business? Um, the quality and quantity of reviews, social signals, other behavioral and personalization around the, your location are all key. But let's take a step back and look, how are we really going to, you know, what are the key elements to ranking broken down in detail? So there are three C's to SEO. 
I developed this uh, methodology over a decade ago. The first is the content. If you don't talk about trailers on your site, there's no re reason you shouldn't rank, whether it's Gooseneck or some other type of trailer. So it's important that you create that content. And the challenge is a lot of local dealers rely on database feeds um, based on their manufacturer um, product inventory, but there's not a lot of customization. The sites are all on parity uh, with the same exact content. So one, you have to differentiate your content. And in, if you're unlucky enough not to be an exclusive dealer within a larger market, then you have to really double down and create unique content around those products. So you can rank both locally and regionally for those brands and the type of um, the styles of trailers. So you've got to create that content, blogs, videos, not just the product pages that are ubiquitous across your competitors uh, that carry the same lines. And then there are, are, there's the code factor. So does your site um, follow best practices, sitemap, robot text, uh, schema markup? Code is less and less of an issue these days. It's really more about, um, really at this point, local embed in your code, schema markup to describe what's on your site, um, and, and just having good um, title tags and meta descriptions, which we'll talk about. So that went from a much higher percent a decade or two ago to a lower percent because, uh, again, a lot of the content management platforms are ubiquitous. Google knows how to index them. Probably the hardest thing, if content and code together about 40 to 60 percent of the algorithm, the remainder is credibility, the quantity and quality of links and mentions, the, the credibility of your domain, where it's hosted, how long it's been around. Those are all the key factors. So let's break that down, uh, but with a quick sidetrack on keyword research. So it's important to look at uh, different forms of keyword research or a variety of tools you can see at the bottom there. Um, but you can do key keyword research for free on Google um, using Google search, suggested search, Google trends. And then there are some other free tools. Some of these have um, free capabilities like Uber Suggest, um, but others are hidden behind a gate gateway. So you might, it may be worth a one to two week free trial to get the keyword research and then don't go forward with the full to, uh, subscription. We have subscriptions to SEMrush, Moz, and others like SpyFu and Screaming Frog on behalf of our clients because it makes sense for us to have those tools. It may not make sense for a small dealership to have these tools ongoing. It might be um, 100 to 500 bucks a month. So um, one thing you have to think about when you're doing your keyword research is think about the evolution of voice search, so answering common questions, optimizing for local search, destination-based, so having modifiers like your city, um, counties, or, or state. Increasing number of channels means you have to be thinking about channels like Amazon, which half of all product searches start on Amazon, not necessarily trailers, but maybe trailer accessories. Semantic search is where schema comes into play. Google understanding this is a name, an address, a phone number. This is an event. This is a trailer. Um, this is a blog post. All of that's important because it's getting harder and harder. Google makes it difficult in Google Analytics to tell you which keywords are ranking. So it's important that you um, utilize these tools to try and triangulate which keywords are popular, desirable, and, and what level of competitiveness, and which one should be used for SEO versus paid. So you figured out your keyword research, now it's time to incorporate that. So uh, before we do that though, there are some other elements you need to think about on the code level of the three C's. So the content's all about the keyword research and creating that content. The code is making sure it's indexable and credible. So there's a tool called web.dev owned by Google where you run your domain, it will tell you your performance, accessibility, best practices, and SEO scores. And these are average scores for Anvil. You can download the report, send it to your web developer, your webmaster, and say, fix these things. Um, and down below in the bottom right, you can see render blocking, off-screen images, and remove unused CSS are three of the most common recommendations. It's nuanced to try and optimize those. But there are more fundamental things like using HTML4 and 5, cascading style sheets when possible, breadcrumb navigation, which may be standard with some of the, the, the data pools that, and data providers that you use for inventory management, um, robot text file, for custom 404 error, 301 redirects, XML and HTML sitemaps. Those are all fundamental. So do some research on those or go to our insight section for more information on these details in our SEO ebook or white paper or articles, or just Google them and you'll get a, a roadmap on how to fix those, or you can obviously hire somebody like us to help you through that. Uh, the second component of code is your title and meta description. 
So the title tag with the right keywords helps with your rankings. And we say right now about 62 characters or less. You can go a little bit higher up to 65 or 70, um, but really we like to keep it around 65. The keywords are critical on that title tag, which shows up in the navigation bar, but really Google looks at that saying, this title is probably relevant, the keywords in this title are relevant to the page, so I'm gonna give those more focus. The meta description, however, keywords don't matter in the meta description because they're not weighted, but what is weighted is the compelling copy that gets people to click. So the title tag gets the, the rank, the meta description gets the click, so having compelling messages, calls to action, adjectives, adverbs, contact information is what you want in there. You have, right now we're saying 140 characters. So a, a, a short sentence for your title tag, a long um, sentence for your meta description. Um, but, but length matters. If you go too long, it'll truncate. You won't get penalized per se, but it may not look as good or read as well. Um, and Google may stop indexing um, after a certain character count. So it doesn't really hurt, but doesn't really help. Short and sweet is the answer to hit within these character uh, limits. Now, domain authority is the biggest credibility factor. Again, it's looking at your link, diversity and quality of the domain and the pages linking in, the um, alt text or anchor text, the uh, social mentions or signals, the domain age, and search volume of your brand are all factors that go into domain authority. You can see here, Anvil's domain authority is 47. We have 1,500 linking domains. 8,100 links, and we're ranking for almost 1,000 keywords. That's what Moz will provide you in their, um, in their subscription, and that's what we use to help build out um, targeting. So we would, I can tell you what your domain authority is quickly, but what matters is what are your competitors' domain authorities, because that's what matters is the competition. You don't have to outrun the bear, you have to outrun the person next to you. So you want to figure out what the pace is, so you can develop a link strategy that gets you into a leadership position that gives you enough of a higher domain authority over your competitors to, to maintain that steady rankings that will help you outrank them. On the content side, is the credibility is a factor with the content. Um, and so creating content, online and offline content, integrating that in with your website, syndicating it out, this kind of, the kind of content like really good articles, blog posts, and art and videos will help secure links. They're viral and people will link to that content articles and blog posts and product pages, et cetera, product listings on your site. So that's a great way to get the content going. So uh, the content strategy is part of your credibility factors. So next up, let's talk about paid media. That's uh, the umbrella we call paid search and social. And every form factor, text, display, uh, or display ads, which is like banner ads and video, all of those, and then advertorial, like sponsored content is all under the umbrella of what we call paid media. So on, on search with Google, that's text ads. There are video ads, obviously, on YouTube. You might also have shopping feeds on Google, which I highly recommend for trailer dealers and accessories. Um, there might be, um, on the display side, there might be banner ads. Uh, also, also they're on different platforms. There are different options, like retargeting, remarketing, or sponsored content that's kind of a hybrid between the two. So ad spend is increasing at a decreasing rate as saturation happens. The most popular social platforms outside of Google would be Facebook, Instagram for consumers, for business, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter for both, but they're much smaller in nature. So again, Google Ads, formerly Google AdWords, Microsoft Advertising has now rebranded Bing as Microsoft Bing. I'm not sure why, um, but Google Ads recently changed their name this year, and, and Microsoft changed their um, their brand earlier in this month in October. Um, then you've got the, the dealer, uh, the directories and business sites like Yelp that uh, use blackmail, um, basically saying, oh, you have low star reviews. If you advertise them with us, your star reviews will magically improve. So they start flagging more low star reviews and allowing more five star reviews to change your average and you're happy, but I think that's criminal. Um, but sometimes it's the only way to help because you're losing business um, from low Yelp reviews for sure. If you're selling accessories or really affordable, simple trailers, Amazon may be a good channel to get your brand out there and move some product at volume, but it's much lower margin. Um, so for most of you, if you're looking for consumers, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, possibly Twitter are great channels. Uh, if you're B2B, if you're a manufacturer looking to reach dealers, LinkedIn might actually be a good channel because you can target um, by dealer owner or head of sales or marketing 
to target um, you know, your, your product. So the basic strategy with social, with social and paid search uh, is under paid media would be to use different strategies for different stages of the decision funnel. So awareness, interest, um, intent, decision, or consideration. There are a lot of different uh, nomenclatures used, but the AIADA approach is that display and generic social ads, um, broad uh, text ads are really good for awareness into the consideration stage um, to help generate engagement, uh, to, get, to help qualify. Then you can, uh, when somebody visits your site, then you can target them with remarketing, retargeting ads, or look like audience ads so people see the, the products, if not the, the product lines that they actually viewed on your website, it's very targeted, it's relatively affordable. And then as they get down the funnel, you might actually start releasing shopping ads with specific product lines and models and makes that, um, that would lead to a sale that's pre or lead generation or sales or exact search ads and very targeted remarketing. So all of that happens through the process. You have to understand how to set this up, which is why we 70% of what we do is build and manage paid search and social. But you can do it yourself, of course. Um, now, paid search is used to be 90 to 100% of what we did 10 years ago. And then five years ago, social started to really pick up social ad platforms who were sophisticated enough and effective enough that we started moving mo money over, particularly to Facebook, Instagram, which is one platform, ad platform. And we saw a huge gain. So today, Google's probably down to on average 50 to 60% of our ad spend up from down from 100%. So Google is still the 800 pound gorilla in terms of volume because Facebook has a finite audience as does Instagram. And if you hit them, you can get, you can really tire out your creative and frustrate them. So what you really need to do is look at um, keeping things fresh. And Google has a constant stream of fresh people that have never seen your ads. They're all first time searchers. And so it lasts a lot longer. So here's a uh, sample ad from one of our former clients to Kine, where you have uh, 60 characters of a dual headline. So it's single headline and, and a desktop, usually they're truncated and split into two on mobile. Uh, the vanity URL, 80 characters, which can be one to two lines of why you should buy our product, and then use review extensions, call out extensions, and others to um, maximize your real estate and increase clicks, and then site link extensions up to four to um, get more real estate and drive people to other parts of your site. And there you've got, a, for the same cost per click, you have at least six links, or I'm sorry, at least five, sometimes six links. So these are all ways to maximize your real estate. So these are the fundamental structures of um, paid search. When you drive people in, the best way to keep your cost per click down on, on, on paid search ads is to make sure that the keyword or phrase you're buying matches to the ad copy, matches to the landing page, so your headline on your landing page needs to tie to the keywords and the ad copy, which means you have to really break down your campaigns and ad groups in a way that you maximize something called quality score. So the scent that carries through from the keyword to the landing page will maximize your conversions. The challenge in your industry is that a lot of your product feeds, which you typically in an e-commerce or even non-e-commerce format where you have a product catalog, is you're driving to the product pages for specific um, models and makes of trailer, and it's tough to have custom landing pages. So those may be used more for branding or top of funnel or broader um, you know, um, style uh, type of searches. So headline, punchy body copy, some bullets, hero images, testimonials and other social proof, manufacturer logo, other features, and then maybe a secondary call to action, follow us on social or sign up for um, promotions and updates via email. That all needs to be factored in. Now you can factor a lot of this into the general layout of your product pages, but if your feeds may be somewhat limited, honestly, based on what your data provider is doing. So incorporate what you can to maximize conversions as the message, and that actually improves your quality score with Google and lowers your cost. So uh, looking at this platform by industry, you've got, according to WordStream, your average search cost per conversion is about $26. $119 on Google Display Network. The cost is lower, but the reach is huge. Um, may or may not be a good fit, but you at least want to test it. And on Facebook, average cost per conversion is 43. So 
Facebook in this study is twice the cost for automotive, which is relative to trailer. Um, so you want to really start with Google, test on and expand to um, Facebook, Instagram, and other platforms. Um, time spent, uh, so that, that, that rounds up pay. There's a lot more to it on our website uh, in our resource or insights section. I recommend checking that out because we've got to keep moving here. So on the social media side, the, the behaviors changed dramatically since March. When April hit and everybody was locked in at home with or without a job, they were spending a ton more time on social, as you can see. So April forecasts were dramatically revised for the next three years. Um, to hit new planes, instead of being flat, they spiked up in this year with uh, so many people stuck at home and consuming more content through social. Snapchat and Instagram were projected to have little to no growth, Facebook negative growth. Instead, they've all exploded, certainly Instagram more than Facebook. So that's what's really happening there. Um, but before we talk about social media and by platform, I want to talk about the power of social media as video is the, the foundational element. So for instance, um, if you were to record a two minute video on YouTube, what you wanna do is um, take maybe a 30 second to one minute version of that video and natively upload it to Instagram. You might also take a one minute to 30 second video version for Facebook. Uh, Facebook is a large video viewing platform, but nowhere near YouTube. Um, and frankly, you know, I think you're gonna see more success of engagement on Instagram. You can slice out images when you film in HD, still images from your video to post on Instagram and Pinterest. You can take some of those assets for Snapchat or even TikTok or WhatsApp for live feeds. And then you can slice out the audio for a podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or Cloud, um, uh, SoundCloud or even Libsyn. And then you can get the text transcription of your two minute video and, and use that as a basis for a blog post or an article. Any of that content, video, audio, or text, or images could also be syndicated to LinkedIn. So one video recording could be um, four to eight form factors based on different lengths and different uses across um, video, audio, text, and images across the different platforms. The other thing to keep in mind as you build out your social presence is to integrate it with your website. So link to the big six, six social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. That's what we do on our website is link to those big six platforms so you can follow us and engage at your own leisure. Um, you can also add a shareability button, which may be common in your product pages, but you want it throughout your site. So any page on your site is shareable, typically through Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And then for bonus points, add a data feed, a social feed from your Facebook, LinkedIn, or uh, Twitter, or, or Instagram into your homepage or somewhere else on your site. So it keeps your homepage or your site fresh with new visual content, and it creates engagement, and it boosts those social signals. So make sure you integrate all of that as you build out your big six social platforms. I have tons of links and resources on our website on how to do social better. But at the end of the day, it's all about measurement. So what you want to do is when you have your, you um, create a Google Analytics account, you have one, it's all about tracking your paid and organic keywords, which ones are driving conversion, what social is driving traffic and conversions, create conversion values by passing through sales data or um, associating a value to a subscriber or a store lookup or a, um, a dealer request for price quote. Any of that can be, associated with value so you can start to associate an ROI with that. So bottom line, this is an old, purposely old view, but it, um, um, image, but it, it's all it's pretty much the same, it hasn't really changed. So the idea is that you can use the measurement to inform your content strategy, your uh, advertising, and your SEO strategies uh, by looking at what's actually driving revenue or quality leads. So uh, to wrap up, um, we've got a bunch of resources I think that'll be helpful for the post-COVID, post-pandemic moving forward. There have been some changes in behavior, so I pulled some research from McKinsey and Company, so you can see what people are looking for. They want availability, and for many of you whose products are not made in the U.S., or for products made in the U.S. where the steel is coming from out of the country, you might have some serious supply chain or logistics issues and be back-ordered on inventory. 
not uncommon with some of our clients across a variety of industries. So availability is really what's going to get you the sale, making it easy, convenience, and then value right now is more important than anything. That's dramatically increased in importance in the last six months, seven months. And then low touch is really important, particularly for retail. So can you get to low or no touch, curbside pickup or delivery, um, you know, delivering the trailers so people don't have to touch it? Um, all of that are things to consider. They're highly important right now and valued. And then keep in mind as you're looking at your marketing and advertising to understand more people are cooking and, and doing DIY projects at home, which might be more general low-end trailers hauling general junk, might be increasing in sales. You've probably already seen it. Um, but advertising um, over the top streaming on as cable cutters are looking at streaming services like Netflix or even audio like Pandora is looking to increase your advertising as people consume more movies, shows, podcasts, et cetera, um, and live streams. So all of that has increased as people spend more time in these platforms. And the older your audience is, the less likely they're affected, particularly if they're retired or medium, upper, high income. They're shopping almost as normal. Um, but for everybody else, there's a little or a huge impact. People have lost their jobs. If people have uh, become sick or, um, or have, don't have income. They're not buying the trailers if the businesses have gone bankrupt or they're not able to do construction or hauling the trailers, sales have probably dipped. So, um, you know, not a surprise to you, but these are some stats coming out of McKinsey. And coming out of um, uh, marketing charts is how total ad spend has changed. So a lot of um, spending offline has decreased by as high as 30%, on average about 8% down. Uh, but digital has increased um, or decreased, um, increased, sorry, ad spend decreases have far less. In some cases, our clients have increased digital spend in the last six to seven months. If they're not in travel and tourism, our clients are still with us, basically, and they're spending. And then what uh, corporate marketers are doing, they're uh, spending more on social, paid social and display and search. That's what we do for a living, um, less on the other markets. and. Uh, chief marketing officers are seeing challenges around data tracking and all of that, but maybe over, overthinking it for your industry um, where it's typically smaller dealers. But here's a case for um, what, why search matters and uh, where ad spends are going. It's slow, but still important. There is growth happening in search. It's primarily Google, followed by Amazon and Microsoft. I remember when Google was 30 to 40% of the market, Microsoft was 20% of the market, and now they're a tiny share, and Amazon has all but surpassed them. The trends in SEO to be aware of include um, Google competing with other publishers, so you know, selling, um, um, booking travel and hotel directly. Um, they're gonna start selling more, more and more direct as a channel, as a competitor. Uh, relying more on artificial intelligence, aug augmented reality, virtual reality. But from an SEO standpoint, zero click searches, which is what we call voice search or position zero, optimizing for the best answer when people ask questions is really truly the, the future, uh, as well as learning to track without cookies um, is another factor in using more schema to give more context uh, with the content on your website. Local landscape is more about advertising now that you can sponsor the top local listing. At some point, they might move it to the top two, making it difficult for um, those that used to be in position two or three to, to even show up in the top three. So look to add, use more of your ad dollars on local search and, uh, and also look to rank in voice search. And um, the platforms you need to know about for, by social, this was from July, was you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, not surprising. Um, purchase behavior by demographic. This is also um, from last fall, about a year ago, might be helpful to you. Um, Amazon is a big player. We help clients build and manage their Amazon uh, feeds and advertising, something you should look at if you have lower price points or accessories. Voice search, more stats there. We have a bunch of articles and resources on our site for that, as well as podcasting. We've helped clients build podcast strategies. You can do your own. I have an article on CXL.com that walks you through the whole process. You don't even need to hire anybody. You can do it yourself. Local search targeting is improving. That local search advertising is becoming more evolved. And email marketing, still fundamental. Build your email list because you control that relationship. You don't control 
ultimately the relationship with through Amazon or the social pro platforms or even Google. So get them to your site, get their email address and build that relationship. So with that said, here are some resources and we're going to wrap it up right here. Um, if you don't um, get a copy of this presentation, you can email me for a copy. Um, we do have articles, white papers, cheat sheets, eBooks and guides and archived webinars on our website you can check out for free. Uh, because this is not a live recording, I'm not able to offer you a Q&A at this point, but I will be, I've marked off the time, so if people reach out to me, I'll be looking to hear from you. You can email me, kent at anvilmedia.com. Um, I can get you a copy of the deck. Um, I, can, I recommend you check out our insights section, sign up for our webinars and our monthly newsletter. And if you reach out to me, I will provide a free audit, uh, which requires a 30 to 40 minutes of your time to review. Um, but it's about a $500 value that I'm offering uh, special to Matt to uh, attendees of my session. And we are, we do have a booth. Uh, Mike Terry, my cohort, is manning the booth, virtual booth. So get some time with us there. And keep in touch. We're happy to answer questions at any time. So with that said, I'm going to um, stop the recording and hope to see you at the virtual conference or hear from you via email. Thank you so much for your time. Kent Lewis, Anvil Media, Digital Marketing Fundamentals. Thanks so much.